Hello and welcome everyone, Lala here with a first Raw, a first look at the Order 1886, a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Wake up, Fred. <coughs> giving up the ghost now, didn't we? Fancy another rant? No, I really don't fancy another round. But anyway, this uh, first look is going to... I'm throwing together the first two parts of my Let's Play, which if you want to watch Let's Play of this game, see the whole story, uh, see how I'm getting on with it, then do have a look at the link in the description. It will take you over to my PlayStation 4 gaming channel, The Deadly Duo, and that's where I'm doing a Let's Play. Really appreciate it if you guys can go and check it out uh, if you like what you see in this first look. Should say there's going to be some spoilers popping up, so uh, if you want a spoiler-free experience, you might want to skip this video. But if you're interested to find out roughly what the Order 1886 is about, then uh, keep watching, basically. So, as you can probably tell, we're set in a Victorian London era, but it's an al alternate history, 1886. Uh, you have these Knights of Arthur. In fact, the main character you're playing as is codename Galahad and uh, you're fighting against apparently an age-old battle between the Knights of Arthur and half-breeds or lycanthropes. Uh, so there are werewolves to fight in this game, we'll have some footage of that later on. Uh, the footage I'm showing you is from my Let's Play. Uh, it's kind of me mixing some of the best bits um, that I thought would help um, me share my thoughts and opinions. So far I haven't completed the game, so this is very much kind of, as I said, first impressions, a um, first look, a first raw. Uh, if you haven't tuned in for one of my first rules before, uh, it's my first look series. So, I should say from the off, the game is very beautiful. It's uh, probably the best looking game on PlayStation 4 right now. However, there are some things that I really like about this game and some things that I really don't like so far. Obviously, as I said, I'm only two parts uh, into my Let's Play over at the Deadly Duo. But from those first two parts, there's a few things... I found already. Now there's a lot of quick time events as you can see here. It's quickly swapping in between kind of cinematic um, cutscenes and then back into the gameplay and it, it does that actually seamlessly most of the time. You have very few times I've been, oh, that kind of broke the immersion, I'm out of the game and I'm into a cutscene. The game does that really well and in fact they've tried to push this as a cinematic gaming hybrid. Uh, experience, which is unfortunately, in my opinion, why you have these terrible black bars in the game. I haven't added that in for cinematic effect, and those don't just show up in the cutscenes. They are there persistently throughout the whole game. Now, the developers have said that this is for cinematic effect and things like that. Um, okay, I can kind of get that, but personally, I'm not a fan of this. If I want to game, I want a full screen experience, and personally, I find a full screen experience more immersive than having black bars. That makes me think I'm watching a film. But then this game also wants itself to try and be a hybrid with a film. I find it, to be honest, a bit too confusing. I think it probably should have just gone for one uh, and, and stuck with it. You know, either be a film or be a game. I don't personally think cinematic hybrids work that well. Obviously, the game does look beautiful, as I've said, but I also feel that's partly. Uh, that could add to the reasons why, in fact, you've got this letterboxing. The game runs at 30 FPS, and again, if it was cinematic, surely it would run at either uh, multiples of 24, either 24 FPS or at 48. So, I guess you've got that mix there of the, the gaming standard of, you know, most people find 30 FPS playable, so that's why they've gone for that. But then you have these black bars, and I'm just not a fan. Uh, and it would have been great to see this game run at, say, something like 60 FPS. That would have been really nice, a really nice fluid experience. Uh, despite it only running at 30 FPS, it does seem to run nice and smoothly uh, on PS4. Um, but, you know, because it's not full 1920 by 1080 with those black bars, it kind of makes me feel that maybe the reason why they did that was that they couldn't get the game running stably at a solid 30 FPS um, at a full resolution, potentially. Uh, which is a shame, because... As I said, graphically, it's superb, and it's it's a wonderful title if you have a PS4. So obviously, as you can see, you can interact with the environment. There's things to pick up and check out, and some of the detail that's gone into that 
uh, is rather impressive. This is very early on in the game. You're just kind of going around exploring some bits. You can have a look at photos. You can even um, look at the reverse of them, see if there's any information there. And I quite like that. Um, some reviewers have said the pacing of this game is really bad, although they're not happy with the pacing. Again, I've only got two parts into my Let's Play with it, but so far, actually... <laughs> The pacing could be slightly faster, but I don't think it's as bad as some are saying. It actually, I think for some parts, makes you go around and search for some items and kind of get a bit more background and history and context for what you're doing and going on with. But, yeah, now here we have an example where, personally, I think, think some of the cutscenes take over way too much. So here we're about to jump across to that ladder there. Now, it would have been great to see a, a cool animation, but actually, that's cutscene. Um... Which is kind of a shame. That's one of the few moments where I feel the cutscene jars out of the gaming experience. And in a way, it's kind of like, oh, it would have been great to have a jumping, you know, a fully animated jumping over to that bit sequence. Here again, you don't actually control yourself on the ladder. You just kind of press triangle to start going down. And then you get control back again. This is all kind of cutscene. You get control back again now where you have to drop off the ladder onto the street. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I'm swayed by that. I, I personally don't like the jumping. Um, I should say the cutscenes and, say, the voice acting, very well done. The characters are the sort of stiff upper lip um, British characters you've got going on. Um, there is a... a f like, I don't know if you kind of have to have the, the kind of the token Frenchman um, as well. Uh, Lafayette joins... Joins you later on for some fun. And, yeah, generally there seems to be a nice kind of story going on with the characters. <laughs> and a good rapport. Obviously you've got these rather awesome looking guns on your back. Again, this is an alternate history, kind of almost neo-Victorian uh, age. You've got um, zeppelins, you've got communicators on your back. And it does kind of have a pretty cool steampunk vibe going through it, and I quite like it. I quite like the setting. That's a game I wasn't necessarily um, planning on getting, but uh, my network machinima actually contacted me and said, would you like to take a look at this game, you know, if you want to make a Let's Play or something, and seeing as just set up my new PS4 gaming channel, and this being a PS4 exclusive, seemed like a, a good time to start a Let's Play with it. Uh, but obviously, uh, I thought I'd do a first draw with it as well, share it with you guys here on my main channel, see what you guys think, and again, if you want to go check out a full Let's Play, that is over at the Deadly Duo. So you have, um, starting off, it, it's quite slow to get into, and you often, I was often in the first part of my Let's Play going, oh, I really wish I could get control again and start running. It would actually have been interesting to see... Um, how far the game could have been pushed on, say, a PC platform in terms of graphic fidelity and obviously FPS, if you could push that higher. But for a console title, I'm very impressed with the graphics. They are lovely. Um, for the most part, bar the whole letterboxing and the, the fact that I personally don't get the whole hybrid gaming cinematic thing, I just, just for me, just not a fan um, of that. that that approach of trying to create uh, an interactive, uh, immersive experience. The game I find is actually pretty good. I'm, I'm liking the story, I'm liking the mystery behind it, and in fact, potentially some of the slower pacing actually helps that, because you're like, oh, what is going on? You really want to progress further to find out what is going on. Now, I have heard um, that the story isn't necessarily the longest. Again, I'll have to wait until I get there before I can experience that. But for the most part, I'm, I'm enjoying what I've experienced Let's so far. Anyway, we're jumping into a fighting scene. It's the first time I get to get to shoot some stuff, which actually took far longer, in my opinion, than I would have liked it to. I'd like to get shooting earlier on, because it's actually quite a satisfying system. I should say, again, while you do have in the fighting sequence the UI popping up, the lack of UI for the most, uh, for most of the gameplay experience is really nice. And actually, I haven't felt kind of that immersed since, say, uh, The Last of Us. It's really nice to have very little UI, and the UI that is there is kind of intuitive and just helps you with the basic information you would need to know, rather than filling up the screen with information that you, know, you don't necessarily need all the time. So, I like that, and that does help me get immersed into the game, despite the letterboxing, and I do like that. 
the gunplay read some reviews and I think the the sense I got from that was that other gamers and other reviewers didn't mind the gunplay it seemed pretty good but it wasn't bringing necessarily anything new to the table and I can kind of agree with that so far there's some cool unique guns and we'll see one of them later on when I'm hunting down a, uh, a lycanthrope but for the most part it doesn't bring anything really new to the uh, the shooter gameplay but what is there is satisfying uh, I should say apologies for probably my poor aim those who've been following my channel for a while now will know that um, I only very recently got a PlayStation 4 and so my console aiming skills are <laughs> a lot worse than my keyboard and mouse aim as you said that was horrific but yeah, Galahad's going at it here with his um, with his rifle. Really satisfying. And there's, again, the, the guns that they've created in this alternate history of Victorian London in 1886. You know, it, it's, it's it's sort of, yeah, it, it's, it's believable that, you know, with certain technological advances, they have this kind of weaponry. And it, yeah, I like it. It's, it works well. Uh, and the weapons that you do get. Uh, I'm hoping, obviously, that there's more variety to the weapons going further as I progress through the game. Obviously collecting ammo here and you can swap weapons out if you pick up a different one. Playing this obviously, um, this is a third person experience. And I quite like it, I don't actually feel the need for this to be first person, I quite like the fact um, that it's third person. Again obviously that working towards its uh, cinematic feel. Now, you do have a fair few sections of gameplay where you are kind of um, traversing the game world and you're climbing around and, and what have you. Okay, we've got the communicator going there on the back, which I really like. The style of the game is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, traversing here, it's just kind of a shame that the traversing sequences are, you know, either heavily cinematic um, transfers or there's very little action that you can that you can do with your character and very little um, control that the player has. Here obviously we're shimmying across a ledge, pretty standard. Jumping across, and up we go. Bit of banter between the characters. And uh, here is where we encounter our first werewolf. Galahad, carefully jumping down. There we go. Good chap. Oh, hi there. How you doing? And just like that, it's werewolf time. So these are the half-breed uh, lycanthropes. Again, I'm still learning the story as I go, and I haven't uh, tried to look at any spoilers so far so I'm learning this as I go but again that's uh, that suits the format of this video obviously it is a first look rather than a full review and they are getting knocked down by lycanthropes and you can hear over the chatter of the communication there that uh, my knight friends are trying to get to me I'm trying to shoot it and you've got an X if you press it at the right time to um, to jump out of the way, but I decided to uh, unleash a whole load into the werewolf though from my rifle, and then you stab it through the heart, and then they die, transforming back into their human self. But he wasn't alone. So I like this idea that you're fighting the uh, the werewolves here. It's a nice uh, nice story and dynamic to the game. I don't know what to expect and where this is going. Uh, and I like kind of the setting that there's lots of trouble going on in Whitechapel. Historically in Whitechapel we have the Jack the Ripper uh, murders. So it's quite a, uh, an interesting setting to be in. What happened? I slew most of them. The last one got away. Now here we get a chance to see a pretty cool weapon, the arc gun. Again, this alternate history where we researched um, some newer technologies. You actually get to meet Tesla. 
And there's a bit of banter between Tesla and Edison on a flyer, which I quite like. But yes, we've got this arc gun, which you will see in action very shortly. <laughs> Lightning! Uh, now you get kind of this, this fast-paced sprint. Chasing the lycanthrope. Gotta hunt it down. The knight's in full chase mode. Running through parts of London, trying to hunt it down. We need to press forward. Yes, yes, indeed we do need to press forward, Isabel. Go, go, go. Galhad's running out of time, gotta take his shot. Like a boss. Centuries have passed. But our order has remained steadfast in its sacred mission to preserve the balance between man and half-breed. Such was the quest of our founder, King Arthur. So, we have a, a cutscene after us hunting down that werewolf, that lycanthrope, and we're back in, I believe, the Palace of Westminster with our order. With grave upset by a Knights new of King Arthur, tasked with hunting down as long the lichen threat. Anarchy and terror is allowed to continue. The plague of lichen infestation that has infected our city will only grow more intolerable. Well, the Lord Chancellor will thus agree to the urgency of a mission into Whitechapel. Whitechapel is a matter for the civil authorities. But as you can see there, it seems like there's tensions between the, the knights and the, their Grand Master, as it were. Here is um, Tesla, showing us some gadgets that we can use in the game. Uh, this one specifically allows us to overload uh, other electrical uh, items and installations. Uh, at least that's what I think it does from what I've gathered, so it's kind of like our, our, little own, our own little Victorian EMP device. And you have to do a little mini game now to lock in the uh, sort of cylinders on each side, which I failed at before I finally worked out how to do it. But uh, actually, the sequence that precedes this actually feels like it's straight out of James Bond film, where uh, uh, Tesla seems like your very own Q. Uh, head of your gadget division, but essentially this is exactly what it is. You're coming down to get, get some more gadgets, get some new weapons. Don't know if that was intentional or not uh, from the developers, but I, I quite like that, setting us up and getting to see some cool gadgets. And most importantly, along with gadgets, every good agent needs a weapon. And in this case, it's a nice uh, rifle. You've always had a good eye for craftsmanship. I've outfitted this one with a telescopic sight. It's ideal for long-range shooting. I would be honored if uh, you would test its efficacy. Testing Pleasure. a rifle? Sure thing. Get to see some more gunplay. Got uh, a bit more uh, gun gameplay coming up uh, in a few minutes. But when I was looking for highlights to include in this first look, this seemed quite nice. Again, the again minimal UI and the, the whole shooting system. Nicely I balanced. quite like it. it it's basic. Um, it doesn't feel overcomplicated. You can zoom in there with the telescopic sight. And it does feel satisfying with the controller. Again, with obviously with the controller, for me, it's quite a new experience coming from keyboard and mouse on PC. You do have the whole uh, like vibrations going on, and actually, I should mention that so I think the Order 1886 well. utilizes the touchpad to on the PS4 controller quite okay. well, and the controller itself. There's lots of, as I said, little kind of mini games to uh, unlock things, and um, I think we've got a pick lock sequence coming up the shortly, and they're all kind of little I mini sequences okay. which you have to use I'll the controller with all the thumbsticks, but particularly the touchpad, I quite like that. Uh, there's a sequence where you have to spot a zeppelin and, and target it and use Morse code to signal it. And yeah, I thought that was a, a very clever way of using the touchpad there. So here we're, we're trying to um, pick the lock. We're trying to actually get into, I assume it's a brothel. 
This is obviously, uh, well, I believe it's an 18 game because there are boobs. Or for those inclined, boobs. So it's kind of, you have to push the the lock up and then you sever the, seemingly cut it in half, which stops the uh, the lock from working. So pushing through on this, cycling around with the uh, analog sticks, get into the right position. Eventually worked it out, how to do it. There we go. And it does feel satisfying when you are um, interacting with the environment. That's done quite well, and again, that's that's quite immersive. It, it's odd because, I mean, you may be confused at this point because you're kind of like, Lionheart, do you, do you like the cinematic hybrid stuff? Do you like the letterboxing? Um, when I've kind of had a moan about it at the start, and I'm kind of like, no, I don't like that stuff, but... Once I actually kind of start ignoring that almost, no I actually I was able to get quite immersed into the game, and I actually quite look f uh, I look forward to recording um, this series quite a bit. So despite my kind of reservations about how they've actually set up the kind of structure uh, of the game, the actual story seems quite compelling and quite interesting. Um, but as many have mentioned, if you don't mind lots of quick time events, you know, lots of quick uh, crossovers to cinematics and things like that, it's it's a reasonable game, and that's the vibe I'm getting from it so far. Again, with the first looks, I don't give um, scores or anything like that. Um, maybe I will do once I finished my let's play uh, of this game. Oh, just a lady with her boobs out. Fair enough. Um, but yeah. Maybe um, I'll give it a score once I've finished the Let's Play. Now we've got some more gunfighting. This time I've got myself a sniper rifle. Very satisfying. And I wasn't even too ashamed of my awful aiming in this sequence. Pick up a grenade here. Grenades are fun. And again, the kind of standard mechanics you sort of expect in a, in a shooter. There's uh, flaming barrels, which obviously you can shoot to explode. Don't know why I didn't shoot that one there though, probably because there was nobody about. Oh, I shoot one over here in a minute. There we go. Boom! And again, coming back to the visuals, they do look lovely. And the you know, the art style has been done very well. And despite it being on a console and obviously locked to 30 FPS, it is a nice smooth experience. Understood, Marky. I had to get a revolver out and oh no, I'm shooting in with my sniper. You do get uh, the revolvers actually in this game are probably some of my favourite, just because you have um, well, his his a kind of like special ability where I go into slow mode and can shoot multiple enemies. But as you saw there, the revolver um, shoots multiple shots at once, um, quite quick. It was like a it was like a burst revolver, so it's quite fun. It's satisfying. The gunplay for me is satisfying so far. You have various types of enemies, so in this sequence I was coming up against kind of the standard grunts which I've seen before with rifles and what have you, but you're also coming up against shotgunners which would um, essentially, yeah, you've got one running up there which I'm just throwing a grenade towards, but they essentially try and uh, flank you and take you out and actually we'll see him using the revolver against one that will suddenly appear in a moment. He's charged the line, there we go, quite satisfying. Oh, got another one coming here. Missed him a bit. There we go. Hit him again. Boom. And the animations for characters and when you shoot them, I think it's quite well done. Seems pretty darn good. If, if anything, this kind of reminds me of how I feel when I play Sniper Elite and those sorts of games. The the shooting experience, especially, well, especially the sniping experience. Oh, I thought I nearly blew up then. Uh, the shooting experience is very satisfying. Um, but in Sniper Elite, I would probably say that the the kind of the rest of the gameplay 
isn't that great and Sniper Elite probably doesn't have the, you know, the greatest story in the world um, to it for the most part. It is primarily, you know, just shoot everything. You've got some gadgets to try and kill more enemies along the way. Um, with the Order, I like its gunplay, probably because it reminds me of Sniper Elite, which I really like. But unlike Sniper Elite, actually, as I said, I quite like the story so far. And I like this Victorian setting, I really do. Again, probably slightly biased on that because I'm a history student, or history graduate rather. Oh, there we go, shot him as he was trying to take out a grenade. But yeah, uh, on the most part, so far I'm enjoying the order, despite how much I thought I wouldn't like it because of its uh, cinematic hybrid combo. Anyway, we're just going to uh, wrap things up here, so this is kind of my, my brief first look, my first raw at the order. If you want to see more The Order 1886 action, then as I said, I've got the first two parts of a Let's Play uh, out on my Deadly Duo gaming channel, so do go and check that out there if you're interested. It'd be awesome to see what you guys think in the comments there of the full game as I'm going through. But it does seem like it's the story's got a fair few twists to it. Conspiracy and betrayal. But anyway, um, cheers again to Machinima for sending... Uh, the code over for me to be able to obviously play the game. Uh, this video wasn't sponsored by them or anything like that. They just sent it over so I could take a look if I wanted to. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Until next time, don't forget to comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take Brian join the Legion. Happy lycan throat punting. Ciao for now. I'm as good as dead already. Get him!